Super Legends. I'm rolling out. It's almost done. Uh, I'll get some clips for you guys. And I hope you all get a chance to get some K's in. Yeah, Paul's still not 100%, so I'm rolling out solo to meet uh, guys in the woodlands. Got the lights on. Team RR. See my rear lights on. Front light is on. We're rolling. It's almost dawn. Sun's coming up. It actually felt cool, nice it's about and five cool. forty-seven in the morning. So, even about ten minutes later than I did last week. That ten minutes made a difference. How much light we have. So, I'll get some clips of y'all. Get out there, get your K's in. Today's ride, I rode from the house solo. Paul is still not a hundred percent to go meet Team RR in the woodlands. That's my early route there. Picked them up and then we headed out and I found out that we're riding to Lake Conroe. So primarily the clips you're going to see is the ride on the way until we got to the lake. It's very interesting. They, although we've ridden in the area, they use different roads that I was not familiar with. So it was good to really experience that. You can see where we're over the lake there heading all the way back. But the cliffs basically stopped when we got to the lake. We stopped at a nice little resort, kind of like a restaurant on the lake. It was just a nice stop. And so there's a lot of little action that took part in the ride. And I think you guys will enjoy the clips. So I hope you all got a chance to get your case in. If you didn't, make sure you get on the trainer and do something. But I hope you enjoy today's video. I don't know, 6.30 in the morning. Well, that's what I should say. I started the camera here, uh, it's 1488 and uh, Old Egypt Road. We're heading towards Pony and we're still warming up. It's almost probably 30 minutes into, maybe 20 minutes for them. Because I rode about 40 minutes or so to meet them. So the guy, new guy riding with us, asking me my name, introducing himself, and he compliments me on the titanium bike. I'm riding the Kish bike today. I'm go ahead and tell him that I prefer the metal bikes. But this guy in the blue is not riding with us. He's just somebody that happened to be out here at this point. In a short while, we end up waiting at the stop sign because somebody drops a bottle in the back. But right here, we're warming up. Until we get out on the open road, the speeds are kind of low. Anywhere from 22 to 24 k. Right now, we're doing about 27. They're all on pretty much. It's just a warm Whenever you see people sp spread across the road like this, you know it's not on. We have a slight tailwind and a crosswind from the east. This time of year, the wind always blows from the south. In the morning, it's just very slight. That's Mary on the left there. She likes to push big gears. You can see she's on a big chain ring. <laughs> and quite a ways down, and we're not really going that fast, but she says she prefers a ride like that. So you can see her cadence is kind of low. That works fine if the speed is steady, but when the speed starts to change, it, it wears on the legs and the muscles. There's Randy moving up on the left there. We're in a neighborhood here, so a whole lot of traffic, especially this early. 6.50 a.m. The bridge they're going over is a long bridge. They went over it one time. We end up stopping here. Because somebody dropped a bottle. I was not aware of it. So I turned the camera around to see if I could pick them up. It's 
way back. So I speed it up here. I'm waiting for him for maybe 20 seconds or something. And once we spot him, it's starting to come, we just go ahead and get through this intersection. They decided to go to Lake Conroe today, one of the biggest lakes in the area. We have a large reservoir there. Most of the lakes in our area are man-made. Waiting on the guy to drop the ball back there. Most of the lakes in the Houston area are man-made. You know, a lot of the lakes in Texas, I think, generally. I know Houston, the Houston area. The Lake Conroe is a big reservoir. That's the area where when they release, when they're, when they're at capacity and they release, it floods downstream. All the little tributaries, and all the creeks that are connected, feel the impact. That's our northern reservoir. And we have two reservoirs on the western part of the city. They're building a third one out there. I was kind of hoping they would expand the Conroe build another reservoir out there. So that's why our area got hit with a lot of water when they released. Otherwise, it was fine. You can see everybody to a brass chatting. And shortly, we're going to hit Fish Creek. We're going to take Fish Creek out here, but then they, they go on some different roads to take uh, 2854 East, which I've never used on the bike. And they cut through some neighborhoods. We're running into some nice climbs. Just some different farm to market roads that I didn't know I was not familiar with. But they're kind of in between the mean roads, so it was good to learn that. It's something we're going to be revisiting. That's the joy of joining a, uh, with a group. They can show you things you may not be aware of in your own riding area. And I search for cars. That's Mike coming across. Uh, it wasn't that close. It's the camera on my left. The camera's on my left hand. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's <laughs> talking to somebody. Some guy in the back behind me. So I move up and let them talk. I just like ride. Mike's got the zip full fours on his bike and he was telling me that he gets blown around a lot to cross me. So I suggested that maybe he put a I think the, the other one is called 303 or whatever the number is. Uh, putting a smaller wheel in the front can negate that effect of the crosswind blowing you around too much. It's something that even Envy does to stagger their wheel sizes now. Carbon wheels are just too expensive. One wheel is eight, nine hundred dollars for a wheel. Eight, nine hundred dollars, I can get a nice steel frame on eBay with change left. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just getting out of hand. There's no reason it should cost that much. But they figured the market can bang. So you can see our speeds have picked up. We just hit Fish Creek, out of the neighborhoods, no stop signs. All of a sudden, we're starting to roll. I'm just soft pedaling back here. I'm getting sucked along, trying not to use my brakes. That's Mark up front. He's checking to see uh, if everybody's together. I ended up riding with Mark on Sunday today, and I'm doing this part of the commentary. And Mark ended up hitting every pebble, every rock that was on the road. There weren't that many, but he just seemed to not be paying attention, I guess. I don't know if he was going hard or whatever. 
but then he hit like a golf ball sized rock and it kind of shook his bike and I thought I said man you know you gotta try to avoid some of the rocks you know we laughed about it but I was thinking about making a video about uh, reading the road because those rocks no matter how little they are they can cause flats so you really have to avoid them I'm gonna add to the list uh, make a video on how best to avoid they're, they're easy to avoid unless you're going through a lot of gravel there's not that many to sprinkle the few here and there but he just seemed to be hitting everything on the ride back on Sunday <laughs> you know I told us that man you need to try to at least miss some of those things <laughs> you know so we had a laugh about it but I told him I said you have to be careful because not only do they cause flats they can actually cut your tire depending on how you hit a rock if it happens to have a sharp edge and you probably the same people flick rocks you know depending on how you hit it so if you can avoid them avoid them especially at speed they're not that much but he just seemed to be hitting on everything that was on the road and i avoided all of them so i couldn't figure out why he had trouble he probably just wasn't paying attention to it but a hard on the wheel hard on your tire this point of the road here narrows uh, I think I stayed on the left here and I moved over on this part. The white line here is raised. They painted it, but they did that on purpose. So that you would know that you're not supposed to be there if you're in a car. So they're like slight speed bumps, nothing that substantial. But you feel them. You see I'm coasting. That's the nice thing about following somebody. I mean, these guys are making a hole in the wind. So I have very little resistance to deal with. It's good to see that lady up there in the Chartreuse jersey. That's uh, Davis. And uh, we rode with her on Sunday as well. And I guess she was just taking it easy. She uh, was not drafting very closely. It's good to see her in the, in the pack. She's training for some marathon event on the bicycle. So she's putting in a lot of miles at endurance pace. So when we start hammering, she just lets us go. Because her focus is endurance. way to this ride I passed a rider at the fire station he, he basically stopped to take a drink and I had to do a double take I'm like you gotta be kidding me you guys just saw this guy drink in front of me you've seen me drink on the bike that's gotta eat into your riding time you have to stop and take I guess you can do it at stop lights and stop signs but he, he, he stopped just to drink it, it's that human you know a human horn. I love the fact that these guys leave at 630 because that works out. I get back early. Day I have the whole day in front of me. Plus I'm not out dealing with the hottest part of the day. I'm back by 11, sometimes a little before 11. Four and a half, five hours thereabouts. Because there's not a whole lot of wind right now, you can see the drafting's not tight because really the pace is not hot yet. And so that's the thing. You don't always have to be super close. And plus, uh, if you're not used to riding with other riders, it takes a little bit of time to follow somebody closely. And then you do want to follow riders who are smooth very close. And riders who are like squirrels, give them a little more room. You know, if you can avoid following them, so much the better. The squirrels end up being at the back anyway because they're so inefficient they can't stay in the pace. So it kind of works itself out. That's Mike over there chatting with, uh, 
I need to get that guy's name. So Mark is sitting at the front driving the pace right now. That's the thing about groups. I'm in the pace line in zone two, like the bottom of zone two. So you can get a lot of endurance work in riding with a pace line, especially a group like this. They start out kind of steady and then they'll hammer. But if your goal is just to, let's say you've been off for a while and you want to get with a group, find a group that's not going super fast and you sit in, you'll be able to get your endurance work in and then what you do is when they're hammering, you don't have to go with them when they're hammering because they will regroup. And you'll see that here. This group periodically stops and especially at major turns on the route to make sure we don't lose the other members and we regroup and then we resume what we're doing before. So everybody gets a workout. See this guy's working. The road's starting to go up a little bit. It's a little overgeared because we're not going that hard. I'm sitting in a reasonably sized gear, keeping my cadence it says 81 thereabouts. Because I'm really not working. The pace is not hard right now. I'm sitting a little to the left of this guy. He's the Mr. Craig. Bike fits him really well, this gentleman in front of me. The only thing I would change, I would flick that stem. I don't know why bikes are coming with the stem pointed up. Unless your frame's very small, you don't need that kind of an angle. The light changed at the last minute, so Mark kind of called out that he was stopping. So we had some riders that went to the right. Call back! And they're coming back around. This light doesn't stay red that long. It favors the higher on the subdivisions on both sides. So I see a lot of riders with their stems turned up and if you look at their profile they sit higher up so they catch more wind. There is no reason for that. So the angle of their bike is more than 50 something degrees. You know this is, you know, on a road bike, it should be in the 40s, like 40, close to 45 degrees. And you don't need to be flexible for your stem to be the right angle with the road. You should keep you parallel with the road. What is important is that you get the right length of stem and you set the correct drop of the stem from the sack. Anywhere between two to three inches. It's close to like five centimeters. He's asking me about the channel. Everybody's interested in the channel. When they see the gimbal, and then they remember, oh yeah, you're filming for the channel and they want to know what it is. So I was just telling him about it. But you see how his socks match his shoes? They look really good. It looks almost like a boot. That's a nice combination. I like to do white, white, black, black. Whatever my shoe is predominantly favored, whatever color it favors, Whenever possible, I get a sock like he has over there. It looks really good. And the contrast of those lines in the shoe makes it very visible. He could do black with that shoe. It would work too. Black socks will work. 
and what he's wearing now with perfect matches the shoe perfect. And then he picked up colors from the jersey. So you put some thought into it, you just you look the business. So he's got a good kit there. You see the roads going up. He didn't want to downshift, so he's muscling that gear he's in. So the hills make everybody work. Even if you're in the pack, there is no drastic effect per se. Once the road starts to go up, you've got to work. You got to pedal to get up that thing because you're fighting gravity. When you're rolling on the flats, you can cheat, you can coast. You can turn off the power, freewheel, soft pedal. On a climb, you got to ride. There are a couple of riders behind me, but the reason I'm staying behind these guys here is they're keeping everything nice and tight. You can see the guy on the right is actually uh, overlapping Mike a little bit, but he's over on the right, so he's fine. But these guys are serious. They're keeping it tight. Those are the people I follow. If somebody is leaving a gap consistently, whenever I can, I want to put them behind me. Because those gaps cause you to waste energy. So when you're in, the, when you're in a group, Avoid following people who are leaving gaps because, first of all, they're either not paying attention or the pace is too hard for them. So as soon as things get really hard, they can cause you to get dropped even though you should not have gotten dropped had you been following somebody who was keeping it tight. Because when you have to come around someone and work to close a gap depending on the conditions, that can be all she wrote depending on what's going on or how hard it is. So whenever possible, stay away from people who leave gaps in the line and that way you won't have to work that hard now Mike takes off there's somebody up there and what I'm doing I'm looking to see who else goes so I let him go and I'm on his wheel I go ahead and roll with him this way I don't waste any energy if you see how close I am I'm in the draft I'm staying to his left but the wind's blowing from the right, from the east. This way I got up here without, without spending, expending too much energy. So what's happening now is the group was riding together and the heavy hitters decided to twist the screw. And this is what I'm talking about. So when you're in the group, you wait to see when the pace really quickens. That's when you go. Don't waste your energy early. So what ends up happening, these boys want to go faster, and that's okay. The other, there are three or four people behind that are going to stay at their pace, and at some point we'll regroup, probably hit a light or whatever, but this way everybody gets a workout. That's John up there at the front who was pulling off the front. He was basically riding away from the lady that was following him. And so Mike, the guy in the blue, white, and green jersey, went up there. And everybody else kind of follow. I know Mark is probably behind me on my wheel. That's Randy in the Lone Star jersey. That's the Texas state flag there. So you can see everybody benefiting here from the draft. This is a slight downhill. It says minus one. And that's why on a flat road, drafting really plays a part because you're not fighting gravity. So you don't have to have the power on all the time. I mean, at reasonable speeds, if somebody's just going really fast, 
if you can get gapped on the flat road too. So John's out there working that gear in the white jersey at the front. Mike's on his wheel. You notice my cadence went up 10 RPMs. It's not around 90. This road is up, so I'm climbing right around 90. That overpass is coming. So you've got to pay attention for what's coming up. That's important every time you ride. Even if you ride solo, you need to know what the route is going to give you in terms of challenge. And then you dish out your effort accordingly. Save your effort for the hardest part of the ride. There's no point going fast when everybody else is taking it easy. Because then when they twist the screw, you might be tired. So right here is when on a ride like this, this is about a 3%. I think it gets to like 3%. This is where you save your energy for. That's the whole point of drafting. So that you don't get gapped. And then you work hard. You can see everybody's pulling into it. Watch. I tell this guy you got it. He wanted room to go around. Because this because a Randy has no power in his legs to keep up. So we go around him. You look at my cape. It was initially 90 something, 96, it dropped to the low 90s. I'm riding the same gear, and depending on the grade, the steeper it gets, the more I spin instead of downshifting. I spin the same gear. So we're turning left this time, there's no car coming. That's Mark calling our left turn, he's on my wheel. There's a car on the left, so I'm letting them know so that they don't take a, a turn that cuts across that lane. That's why I told them to call. Because uh, when you're turning left, you know, even in your car, sometimes you'll cut corners. You always want to let your mates know. So we're going left here. I don't usually, we, we, we've come out here before, but I've never been left on this road. I know where it goes as far as the main road. It goes towards Conroe. We're in Honia here. Hey, Randy, There's a couple of riders back there. You see them coming. The language in Goliath is atrocious. We need to I'm adjusting the straps on my shoe. Felt a little tight, so I just loosened them a little bit. So everybody's back together, so the crew's back together. This road has a shoulder, so we're gonna use that. You're doing great, Adam. Shaved them into it. This is my kid. This is a gentleman who told me that his 404s cause him to get blown around when there's, when there's a lot of cross wind. Said he likes to wait and how light they are. They're durable wheels. I mean, when I had them, I didn't have to chew them much. It's just they're noisy. I kind of told him that. I don't know if he captured that. The shoulder is a little narrow here, but there's a shoulder, so we use it because it's two, two lane traffic here. Where the road's fairly busy, it's not very busy. Car's back. Mark says car's back, that guy's greeting us. There's a truck coming around, I think. Maybe it's later. I remember we get passed by a big truck with diesel. Not that guy. An 18 wheeler. We have a few riders here that try to move up the line even though the shoulders narrow but then they don't check and so cars are coming and they're trying to pass people So 
we're heading to the lake. You saw that truck that went by pulling a boat. So a lot of these people here are going for recreation. It's Saturday morning. The Lake Conroe is huge. So a road like this, even if it's busy, if you are a solo rider, you can see the group is using a little shoulder. You can you can ride these roads. I like these kind of roads because they don't have too many intersections. So you can get a good workout. We're using this because it ended up being the best way to get where they were trying to get to the lake. It was the most interesting and then we got through some neighborhoods that got some nice climbs. So it was just kind of a, a nice way to get to the lake that I'd never used before. We've been in the area but not this specific route. So it was a good learning thing for me to just see all these new roads. When I got back, I studied the map and just uh, familiarized myself with it. I was a bit worried about how this would come out because I had the camera and we're in a straight line. So you really couldn't see, so I tried my best to move it around and put it in my right hand here. That's what I'm doing to get this shot instead of just being behind Mike. The but there's not much to get because everybody's in a straight line. You see Mike moving left, right. He's trying to catch the wind to slow down instead of using his brakes. Let the wind slow you down because this is like a slight downhill here. Minus two. You start rolling behind somebody to avoid braking and just move into the wind. Let the wind slow you down. You can see I'm coming up on him. Then he's moving over to catch the wind. Then he goes back behind person. Plus you use that as an opportunity to see around the rider in front of you. So you see what's happening up ahead. It's always good to be aware of what's happening up ahead. Don't get in a group and get lulled into just looking at the rider you're following. You need to look up the road. You need to try to see what number one is seeing, if at all possible. Riding in a group requires more attention, in my opinion, than riding solo. Because more things can happen. You see where Mike is? That's where you want to be. See, he's a little to the left of that rider. That's how you ride. Just slightly over so he can see. He can see the first person there. So when we get out on the, there's a highway we'll come up to, come to uh, I believe, it's not 105, it's, uh, it's a farm to market road 830, I've never been on that. And we end up playing around, the mic takes off and I chase him out. I don't like to chase people and just catch them. So I chase him and I blow past him. And then John's on my wheel, so it's fun, so it's just good. Got the, got the juices flowing. I'm sitting back intentionally because uh, we're going to be turning plus. It just seems further than it is because of the wide angle but I wanted to make sure there was enough room so if I look back, I'm not right up on somebody. We're checking for traffic. This is called Old Highway 105, this road. So the first time I've been on this road, I've seen it on the map, but uh, it's good to come out here with these guys. 
ended up being a nice area. It's a neighborhood. You just go in through neighborhoods, so it's quiet. The surface is decent. And most of the dogs here were behind fences. <laughs> I think almost, I think all of them were. Every yard, there must be an ordinance or something here that they're paying attention to. Because every yard, the dogs were, were out, but they were fenced in. So you didn't have to be concerned about them getting on the road. I thought oh, that's cool. So the group is still together. Um, that's uh, Mary on the left there, the white RTBC jersey. That jersey ended up looking really nice because John was wearing it. It's very see-through in the front, so it's a summer jersey. Being white, it's perfect too. Right turn. I'm letting them know we're turning right because Mark behind me called right turn. And the guy in the front. He's busy hammering. I had to tell him again. Right turn! <laughs> That's Mike and uh, I, I didn't get this guy's name. The left there. Busy hammering, not paying attention to where they're going. If you don't know where you're going, you got to at least find out. <laughs> if, if you're at the front. If you're leading us. Mark rolls up to the front because this area that they're going in, Randy on the right knows all the little turns. Because if you miss a turn, you end up in the dead end because we're heading towards the lake and the lake is huge. So most of these neighborhoods are near the lake. So there are very few roads that will take us directly to the lake without dead ends. And there's Randy on the right with the state flag jersey. Staying back to just get a good shot. And checking out the airs, I'm reading all the road signs, you know, just familiarizing myself because I know the main roads, but I haven't been through these neighborhoods. And this is nice. These are the kind of roads you can use where you live. Some of the, if you have roads like these in subdivisions that don't have a whole lot of stops, you can get a good workout close to home without going far. So it's good to have these kind of routes in your pocket. Especially during the week. These roads are never busy. Early in the morning, everybody's going to work. They leave and get out of the neighborhood to sneak in and get a ride. Boys at the front twisted a screw a little bit, watching to see what's going on. I can ride up there, but I just sit back here for now. Still trying to see what they do. Oh, I'll go around Mary. I don't remember doing that. I guess I rode up there. Look at my cape. Using a high speed cake to get up to these guys. The road starts to go up. That's why I'm spinning. Now I get up here real quick. In the drag. Coasting. Notice where I'm sitting here, I can see between the two guys at the front, that's where I look. I'm looking at the road, I'm not depending on them to call obstacles. I want to see it as if to say I were riding solo. So whenever possible, that's what you want to do. If it's not possible to look between, you want to be a little off out of the right or the left of the rider you follow, so you can see those things and not depend on people calling. 
That way you can make your decisions earlier on what line to take. Now, a lot of times, depending on who you're following, if you have an experienced rider that you have confidence in, you can just follow their line because they're not going to ride into obstacles. Now, not all riders do that, as I said earlier. That's Mark on the right there who was running in, running over every little pebble on the road. <laughs> so I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is Highway 105. This is the main road people use to go to the lake. We just turn here for maybe about 150 yards, I'm guessing. And then we take a left turn into a subdivision and we'll use that way to get on a farm to market road out there. It's just a very ingenious way. It made it more interesting than riding on this highway. It's a boot line on the road. So I like what they did. There are many ways to go to the, to the lake. We could have used 105, but this way was more interesting. You got more miles and you got a more challenging route. If you notice, I'm sitting behind the, what I call the main actors. And <laughs> you know, it doesn't take long to recognize who puts force to the pedals in every group. These are the guys that like to put force to the pedal, so I'm staying close to them. So when they go, I'm there. This guy yo-yos back and forth. I didn't get his name. He's got a nice steel bike, a vintage steel bike. Wind's beginning to pick up a little bit because we're near the lake. The lake's uh, behind us. We're headed east. But to the left, on the north side, the lake is there also. It's very big. It's a big area that it covers. So all of that breeze off the water will fill in some of it. This road has a nice shoulder for miles and miles size of a lane. Even with that, I, I don't care to ride on these kind of roads. It's boring. It's wide open, not, nothing much. You got a few rollers, but it's not as interesting, let's put it that way. When you use it to get to other roads, which is what these guys are doing on this route. So most of the things that were the, the roads that were taking here were new to me. Noting everything. Oh, this guy's riding a Hans Schneider. I just noticed the name on the clip right here. Hans Schneider is a renowned custom builder of steel bikes. He's been doing it forever. He lives in, uh, I think, is it Killeen? Somewhere in the hill country. Um, yeah, just built good quality steel. All he does is build steel bikes. That's it. He didn't get on the carbon crate and all that kind of stuff. That's all he does. And he's just a master builder. Across to make the left turn. I thought there was enough room for everybody to do it, but half of the group is on the right side of the road there. So they wait until the traffic clears and then they come and join us. Back 
what he told us last time. Yeah. 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 The, the light turns yellow here, and Mary's still dragging. She's on the right Come on, off. Mary. And I told her to come on. Get that room. I told her to be caught in the middle right right. So we turn here, and I see the road going off, and I smile. <laughs> I look forward to hills nowadays. I guess you know, I live in the hills now, so it's kind of like so I'm right on this guy's wheel. At this point, I'm still, this is like my second ride with these guys. I'm just kind of watching to see what their norms are, you know? I want to see if somebody would attack or do something. And Mike's on the right. So I'm sitting on the left here. As we go off, this road's going up. It says 4%. It didn't feel like 4% to me, so I must have been feeling good on Saturday. I had my regular week. I did my workouts. I had enough rest. So I was enjoying this climb. I'm in a big gear. I, I think like a 53, 19 or something like that. I really didn't spin on this thing. Right. Everything felt good. Move over to the right here. I'm just following whoever's going faster. Slip between the two. Then he picks up, so I go on him. Now, right up here, I, we don't know where we're going because Randy's way off the pace and he knows the way. So we gotta wait for Randy. Randy, right? So he's I on clip and then he says right. And then when we turn right, it's a wall. And I'm in a big gear, so I decide I'm not going to downshift because there's so much load on the drivetrain. So I end up just, look at my cadence. I mean, look, yeah, look, 37. I don't know what I'm in, but it was like a wall. I was like, so it didn't hurt or anything, but I just didn't want to risk putting so much torque on the thing. I didn't want to sit down. I could have sat, but I saw that it was short. We used to ride these things like that in Austin. So it was no big deal. You can see me take a, a short line here. Kind of like a cheating line to get back and stay right there. I was not expecting that. It was a nice little bump there. So I will definitely be going back to check out that area. I like that. I like those. We used to have a bunch. We have a bunch of those in Austin. The Austin area. Every neighborhood has a wall. We just there's one. I used to live on a place called Jester Mountain. I mean, just vicious, and it, it was long. I take you 10 minutes to climb it or something just to get home. I'm feeling good now. I roll past those guys, right up to these guys. We're still left. trying to figure out where we're going. I told them left because the dead end sign is on the right there. I saw that. So you can only go left. So by going through these neighborhoods, we'll be able to get to a highway back there that will take us the scenic route to the lake. That's what this. That's what they're trying to do. Speed bump here. So Mark is not familiar with all the turns, but you kind of get a nose for it after a while. I know where the lake is, so I know what direction we're in. We're headed kind of northwest right now. You see up there above the cyclists on the display, it says northwest. More, more west than north. That's what I'm telling Mark, this would be a nice climb going the other way because we're rolling down this thing all this time. That's the way my brain works. So you come back the other way, it'll be a nice climb. And it's long. And it wins. It cuts us off a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. So when we do some of our winter rides, we'll be coming back the other way because we, we end up hitting the lake and we can cut through here. We're heading back west. Use this way to get back yeah. to our area. That would be cool. So even though we, we're doing all this climbing or whatever, because we're in neighborhoods, you got all these stop signs, the pace kind of yo yo. So on, we're gonna hit a highway and then we'll really get going. We 
turning right here, but he didn't call it. And we see those dogs on both sides of the street people walking their dogs. So once he said right, I turned right here. And Mike ended up on the opposite side of this boulevard, riding against traffic. Because <laughs> there's not much traffic. There's a dog over there, I'm telling him to behave himself. I move over to the left. There's a car behind us, but I asked him to wait. And once we get around the dogs, I move over. I always give dogs a lot of room, just in case. And that lady was holding the dog, so that was kind of cool. They can, they can jump at you, you know, so to them it's like they're playing. They don't understand the danger. So where are we going now? Left, left turn! Left oh. turn! This is a nice highway here. It ended up no stop sign. Bye back. So of course everybody's juice is flowing, so we pick it up. This road has a slight grade. And even though these roads are not very far away, uh, I've never been on this particular road, so it was kind of a nice find. And it's not way out of town. If you notice that there's a break here, so I move around this guy and ride up the course. So I feel that that's where the action is. kind of what the ebb and flow of a ride is. Just kind of get a feel for the brakes. The brakes happen because the pace is picking up. of this section here Mike ends up asking me about the gimbal like everybody always does he's like how can you carry that and doesn't that keep your hands off the bars <laughs> so I thought that my hands are not off the bars I can shift break everything ended up being a nice road. I mean, one of 
weren't a whole lot of cars coming. Definitely want to visit this area. Get real familiar with these roads. We're going up, it's like 0.7 or something. You can see just visually. Yeah, nice, that's 1%. So it's just the four of us up there at this point. I don't think anyone's on my wheel. So it's really good riding with these guys that go hard. I mean, here we're going hard and then I think in a little while we end up waiting at an intersection for everybody to regroup. For several reasons. First of all, Mike doesn't know the route we're taking very well. But this way everybody gets their work out. This is another uphill. It says 1%, 2%. Nothing too bad. But whenever there was no intersections or neighborhoods, the pace went up. John's leaving a gap here. I'm sitting on him, but it looks like he's hanging. You know, I'm always watching those kind of things. Let's see. Nobody's immediately on my wheel, but there, there are people gapping back there. I think Mary and someone else back there. That's the intersection coming up where we'll stop. And Mike starts to tell me about his wheels getting blown around in the wind. Oh, yeah. So I tell him about my experiences with the zip wheel. stop here because we don't really know where they're going. There's Mary. So Mary was close. She hung in there. It was a very muggy morning. I just hang on to it. <laughs> nah, it's too heavy. Plus it, it, it uh, reduces the angles I can get. This is a little more challenging but I get better shots. It pretty much goes where my eyes go. Yeah, it's about a, about a pound more, but... Well, no, it's just that not having to use on the bar. Ah, uh, well, I really just guide the bars. When you're fitted properly, you don't... <laughs> anyway, I've got the my hands on the bars. It's just that it's like I'm holding a thicker... I can still shift. Uh-huh. You know, I had to get really used to them. Well, yeah, it's crosswinds. They'll blow you. Yeah. Yeah. Are my wheels like that? I can go over no Yeah. Those are what four, four something. He's riding four or four. Got it, lead. Yeah, four or four. Six. Yeah, that will that will blow you from the sun. But you know, if you if you try putting a three, the three hundred on the front and four in the back, people say they work better that way. So slightly smaller on the front because your weight's on the back. Oh well, yeah. I, I don't. I used to have those. They're just too noisy for my liking. <laughs> I put them on eBay. People, somebody bought them. It just every time you stand up and sprint, it's sharp, 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 sharp. It's like, come on. There's too much noise. I had the, the, the three. One word. So Mike was asking about the, All right. the gimbal. He thought I didn't have my hands on the bars. I explained to him I can shift and break everything. It's, just, it's a long side. So it's hard for people to grasp. Careful, you're not clipped. Yeah, there he didn't go. clip in. Iron. Crazy. He didn't I clip in. Hit your shin. <laughs> yeah, don't put too much force on that unless it gets in. I know. He mentioned to put the camera on the helmet. Yeah, it's doable with the camera I have, but I wouldn't be using the gimbal on my helmet. It, it wouldn't be necessary. What I do if I miss it? What, if I miss it like you did? I use the foot that's clipped in, get to the intersection, yeah. and then I clip back in. Yeah. So I'm not in the middle there stumbling around. Yeah. That happens. So on certain rides, I may put the gimbal on my helmet. I mean, not a gimbal, but just a camera. 
on a standard GoPro mark. They would work. And I'll probably end up doing it on other rides in the future. It's a different perspective, and it works fairly well. But I like the lens on this camera. Yeah, the resolution is very good. Roads. Neighborhoods. It's nice. Little Egypt. This is Little Egypt Road, it's called. I've never been on these roads. I've been in the area, but not this route. Okay. In the area called Egypt. Uh, these roads are new to me. We've never used them. This is not this is not too bad. It's a subdivision between the main highways. You never know how people ride. Oh, yeah. Welcome to this new boulevard. I heard brand the car new. back. They pulled out. Bro. And the car blew. I'm like, not on. so much for cars. You're around other riders. Yeah. You got to check. That's what you do. Because in a big pack, you can pass you. So back here chatting with Mary. Nice road. Me, uh, yeah. Davis. Not Mary. Yeah. Davis. I think Mary's John up there. Burst, Park Street. So I'm making a mental note of all these streets. This is a nice boulevard. It's quiet. All subdivisions because of the number of subdivisions that they added out here, they built this. I love this kind of roads because they have rollers and you got you can use this whole lane. Sitting on Mike's wheel here. Mary's behind me. We're still chatting. Now you'll see the difference in a little bit when the pace picks up. You just just watch Mike's body language on the right. Right now we're just kind of casually rolling. You see my cadence is in the seventies. Right about here. Look at Mike's body language. That's what you gotta look for. Watch. Pace is picking up. His cadence up. Look at my cadence. So when it matters, the cadence just should naturally just go up. When you're working hard, look at how closely you close this gap. And I'm watching him and then he goes around. I say, okay, this is gonna this is a good one. So I'm just sitting on his wheel. I'm to his left. And he goes by, he taps these guys. I'm not sure what they're doing. That jump, and then the two of them start to sprint a little bit. So I just sit behind them. I see the intersection up ahead. There are some of the riders. Uh, the group have been taking it easy through the neighborhood there. And so I turn up the power here. See, I'm coasting. 
And all of this I'm doing is just familiarize myself with what they do. There's one of the new roads we came across. I think this is FM 830 or something. Left turn. Save some of your strength when we go down this hill because there's a good climb. Man. That's all we've done for a while. So Mike says, I mean Mark says, uh, save some of your strength when we go down this hill because there's a big climb coming. So I made a mental note of that. It's a nice FM. On the market road here with a wide shoulder. So I expect a downhill and a clump, and that's all in the back of my mind based on Mark's comments. Watching the front there, there's some gaps developing. I go around this guy here. Well, I end up going around the farm. Maybe in a little bit. But the road's gonna go downhill. If you look in the distance, nothing but rollers. It's going down and gonna go back up to the tree line. That's a nice roller shoe. The windy, hilly. Now, Mike on the left that makes a move near the white line. I go to the right because I'm just descending faster than most people here. And there's Mike up front. He's going. Then John starts to go but he's really not going that fast and I decided to just drop the hammer here. So we're going up this this little roller. I dropped the hammer. Look at my speed. So right here I started to make up progress. I pass Mike pretty quickly and I keep the effort. I basically hit zone four by the middle of zone four. And then I decide I don't want to hammer the whole way. So I'm just going to kind of let off gradually. You can see my speed dropping, but it's still on somewhat. And in a little bit, you will see the, the distance that I open to everybody, except for John. John is in my draft. Because I let the power off a little bit, he's able to stay there comfortably. And I'm just making it to where they, they have something to chase so we can kind of get something going. Right there, if you look behind here, you can see the gap to the group. That's Mike in front and the rest of the group back there. So John's on my wheel. Mike's not there yet. But I end up kind of backing off the power a little bit. There's a climb in the distance. So, you know, my effort drops a little bit. I'm letting them know about the gravel. I think uh, Mike ends up latching on to John's wheel. So in a little bit, there's three of us away. I was not looking at speed. It was just effort. I let the effort fall back into my sweet spot because there's a hill coming and I want to be ready for it. And since nobody has come around, I figured I need to just continue the effort. There are different reasons why people don't come around. It's either too hard or they're saving their energy for the climb that's coming up. Because they know there's a climb coming. I'm not familiar with this road at all. At all. We, I've never been on it. But it's a nice road. This goes directly to the lake. You end up down the road, bypassing it, and going through our neighborhood. So if you stayed on this road, it would dead end directly into Lake Connor. That's another reason we've never used it. It doesn't go all the way through into Montgomery, where you end, we end up using to go back into town. So we're headed west.
I sat up there for a while. This, this is unedited. I'm just riding. And I think the road starts to go up here. Yeah, we're saying. We might have gotten the three. It's not, it, it didn't end up being a very tough climb. And John comes around. Then I noticed Mike was there. You always gotta look before you move over. And I slip on behind Mike. No gaps. We're going hard here. This is a bump. I keep my cadence in the 90s, I believe. Just a little faster than I normally climb. Efforts back up. Right, this is a three-man breakaway here, so we're able to sustain this until we turn off the power, and then they catch the group catches back up. So after I went and passed everybody, what I did was I let my effort drop a little bit because I knew there would be more to do. That's what you gotta do. I think there's a turn here. Take a drink. Not really sure what to do. So after the turn, everybody catches back up and then Mark starts to recount the excitement of what happened on the road. So Mark yells, right turn and then Mike turns into the shell thinking they're gonna stop him. I told him they're not stopping. I think he's turning, I don't think they're stopping. Without that we backed up the power, people kind of caught up. And they're turning on this street here. I think there's a car or something. Car? Pulling the boat to go into the lake. Stop here, then Mike starts to add the speed of the left, right up here. It's not a popular road to know. Fun road, screaming downhill, and another screaming uphill. Not that long. That's a tough show. I saw Mike take off, and then I saw John and Eldred go, and I thought, I got off the 62 downhill. <laughs> Yeah, Kilometers. I mean, I turned on the turbos. Yeah. I got dual turbo. <laughs> John and Eldred caught the turbo. And then John <laughs> caught me at 64. <laughs> no, tell me your first name. Eldred. 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 Eldred caught me. Eldred. Where are you going at 67? I didn't look at speed. I was just running. Yeah, Eldred the locomotive. So Mark one calls like me this. Eldred the locomotive. <laughs> That's the second time I've been called that. I knew Bob with Sword? UMC Sword. called me that on the MS. <laughs> of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So we're just shooting the breeze here. <laughs> I think it catches wind. <laughs> it's only about another mile and a half, two miles to the lake gas station if you want to stop there. Okay. So That's we're about two miles from the lake. Yeah, you, know. you were going fast. I didn't look at speed because it's discouraging. <laughs> That's just right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't look at speed when I ride, I just ride and I focus on my effort. So Mark's calling me the locomotive. Uh, Paul was on a ride with us. He was actually sagging for us on the MS. And another rider called me a locomotive. So I was really trained for that MS that year. It was the first year I met Paul. Uh, a little after I met Paul, I don't know if it was... Uh, I know the MS was early in the year. Might have been 2017 MS. Whatever it was the last time I did it. I think it was, yeah, I think it was 2017. But anyhow, um, at this point, they're cutting through the neighborhood. I'm noting all the roads, but you know, everybody stood around. They enjoyed that little effort that we all did, and so it was fun, and they were talking about it. That's what that little chat was about. They called me the locomotive because when I go I like to be able to hold the effort as opposed to just going for 10 yards and sitting up. So you can back off the power a little bit. That's why I talk about not limiting your intervals to like 30 seconds or whatever. Just go. Train your body to go. But you got to know what pace you can sustain. I didn't want to go full gas the whole way because, you know, I wasn't sure what was coming. I didn't know how close we were to the lake, all of that. So 
But it was fun. So everybody got to enjoy it. And I think that 60 something was kilometers. I don't think it was miles per hour. Maybe, maybe it was like Yeah, it was at 67 miles. Oh, 35, 30, I think I got like 38. Yeah. So, I, I think that we were in the 30 mile an hour range. I don't think we went much faster than that. But uh, Mike said 67 kilometers. I don't know, maybe when he was going downhill. But it was like low to mid 30s when I went around because it was on a slight incline and you know, you're rolling with the wind. But um, there, were, there were several reasons I didn't, I mean, I mentioned not going full gas the whole way because of the hill. But also, this is my second time riding with this group. It gave me a chance to see who the heavy hitters are. And also, to just kind of know the dynamics of the group. You saw how everybody regrouped at that corner. Made sure everybody's back together now as we head towards the lake. And then... You know, the parts that aren't on the clip on the way back there were some, you know, a few surges and we did some sprints and whatever. So there are different things going on. And I told Paul I think he would really enjoy this group. So hopefully he'll be back to his old self next week and ride with us. Uh, but it's a fun group to ride with. And uh, I'm still learning the little nuances of the group. And so I kind of go with what they're doing. But uh, as we ride with them more and more, down the road the efforts can be harder longer because really when I go super fast I like to kind of just go alone so that was kind of just a moderate we passed them and John was on my wheel so it was fun but uh, I always mix it up so next time when I go my goal would be to not have anybody on my wheel meaning I will launch an attack that's much sharper depending on what the group is doing and then get a gap and try to maintain the gap because these we chase some people on the way back on this ride so you know the boys at the front like to play so that would be fun to to do to where you get a gap and you try to maintain it and let people work back up to you instead of backing off like we did so we backed off and by the time we got to the turn markers would be shouting distance you know another reason we didn't know where we we're headed so it all worked out we sat at the corner we chatted you know shot the breeze and uh, everybody enjoyed that so right here i descend really fast on these bikes i'm coasting and i pass mike even though he's got those arrow wheels i still go faster than he does because the body is most of the drag and you can see that so i just keep my cadence up and roll up and then we turn it left to so dead end over there so i told him left turn left turn clear clear right Mark had mentioned we're within two miles from the lake, so we know we're close to the lake. So I just kind of stay up here with these guys. If you're already up front, anybody comes around, just stay close to them. Because if you're going to stay with the group, there's no point letting them go and chase them back up. And we end up missing a turn. If this is supposed to be the turn, we go straight. I thought these guys knew where they were going, but they didn't. So Mike turn. told us. That's the, that's the Shell Station, that's the restaurant on the water there, that Peach Building. So we'll do a U-turn. And there's a truck over there and these guys ride their bikes on the wrong side of the road on this edge of the road. So the guy's like, what are they doing? He's just sitting there waiting to see what they're doing. So I wait, once he goes by, I just go ahead and turn. I'm not sure why they rode on this side of the road. No biggie. Uh, the stop is over there by, by the, where well, you see the Shell Station, the restaurant's on the other side of it. We actually stopped. The restaurant's actually on the water. It's just really nice. And then they have like a store there or something in the building. I didn't go through all the entire building. But it was a nice stop point mentioned to uh, 
Davis that Paul and I had written on this road on the right as 1097. That long bridge in the winter. Came down this bridge one day from Willis. Seemed to take forever to get across. <laughs> Say it again. So we came from Willis one day during the winter. This way. It's a long bridge. There's key because I hate that Yeah, I didn't. I hate it was a long day. We went through uh, New Waverly. So it was really an excursion. So the guys, some of the guys put their bikes here and they put their pedals on that curb. I don't like to do that just in case the bike shifts. We're at the lake, Lake Conroe. It's beautiful. So I'm taking my bike up. And this guy asks me about that thing in the middle there. I'll put an arrow on it in a little bit. There's a little metal frame that's standing in the middle of the water there. And I told him I shot, it should serve the purpose. I was thinking it serves a purpose. Because he wanted to know yeah. what that's for, and I don't really know. I don't know, I don't know what Maybe they're using for. for but somehow. this is like a loading dock for boats as well. One of those so I basically put my bike where these yeah. guys are putting their bike up on be. the other side. See and I mount my I'll bike against the wall so it's secure so it doesn't move. I don't like to use my pedal to keep the bike upright. Right there, I walk over there, put my bike there. But this is what we did on Saturday. I hope you got a chance to get out there and get some K's in. That's better.